Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris of Velo Sews on social media. Welcome back to So Over 50 podcast on Soul Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. I will fight to the dust for anybody to wear anything they want or not, as the case may be. Probably because I spent nine years in school wearing uniforms. That's Louisa. You'll find her on Instagram at damselfly.ca. CA is for Canada. Thank you to the Patreon supporters of Soul Organized Style Podcast. Your monthly contribution keeps me producing these episodes for free. Sober 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is sober ageism. We're positively leading, being visible in the sewing world. Hi, Louisa. Hi, Maria. Is it working for you? Perfect. Yay. It's lovely to meet you. Yeah, you too. So whereabouts do you live? Vancouver, BC, the west coast of Canada. I think we went there a few years ago. Yeah? It's really pretty. We're so beautiful. We're also the most expensive city to live in in Canada and probably halfway in North America as well. Oh, wow. My tiny little house is worth three and a half million Canadian bucks. That's a lot. It's the land. The house is worth nothing. You're where it's all happening in Canada, right? Yeah. Well, we were born here. My husband and I both were rare because most people all here are immigrants from other places, all over Canada, all over the world. Yeah. We have a huge population of Chinese and Punjabis and Vietnamese and you name it. We got it. My kids went to school with like 50 different nationalities. That's good. Very cosmopolitan. And they would have gotten an idea about their cultures and their food. and Oh, definitely. You can eat at a different culture every day for a year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you for coming on to the podcast. And I'm really pleased that I've been able to see the sort of work that you do because you use the Cyber 50 hashtag. It gives you visibility of the work that you do, which is really so lovely. Thank you. I've been sewing for a really long time and I, I make all my clothes. When did you start sewing? I learned how to sew when I was a little girl. I got my first hand-wound Singer sewing machine when that sewed like a chain stitch when I was eight years old. And uh, my first real sewing machine when I was 13. A toy machine? <laughs> uh-huh. My was... mom didn't know how to use a sewing machine, so I had to learn sort of by doing. And I had like two half years of home ec in school. But they weren't really very good. So I did most of it by reading books and just by doing it, I guess. I made my first real dress for me when I was 13. Before that, it was good old Barbie. You know, everybody is <laughs> close for Barbie. At that age, we probably all had a figure that didn't need to have adjustments for all the curves that we get as we get older. I was a lot thinner then, <laughs> shall we say. But I still need a lot of adjustment because I have really short arms and narrow shoulders. I'm only five foot three and a half. So short, but not petite. My torso is normal sized. It's my arms and legs that are short. <laughs> I think we're probably the same height then. You're tiny. You look tiny on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so you've been sewing since you were a little girl and you yep. pretty much taught yourself more so than your mother teaching you. Oh, yeah. She only knew how to do hems and sew on buttons and stuff like that. The basics <laughs> that everybody knew back then. That's good. You learned how to sew as a child on Barbie and then a toy machine when you were a teenager. And you took some... Oh, when I was of... little. I was eight when I got the toy one. The real one came later. It wow. just sewed a straight stitch, but it was a real electric sewing machine. That was in, um, let me say, 1960-something, uh, earlys. I was born in 1950s. And as you told me before we came onto the podcast, you're one of the oldest members of Cyber 50. Yeah, I think so. There's very few that I, I that have actually admitted to their age, I suppose. On Cyber 50, you don't have to talk about your age. And honestly, you don't even no. have to be over 50, but it's the visibility of people over that age on Instagram and in social media. Yes. There are so many people who think that it's just the media for young people. Only why? Why shouldn't we be on there too with our own little space? And I love that part. And I think the cool thing with your Instagram account is 
you've got a certain look that you have. So with your hats, you have that <laughs> down pat. You always look really great. Oh, thank you. How did you come up with that? I don't know. I don't really think about it that way. I just wear what I like. And because I don't buy anything in the stores anymore, except materials to make things, right? Because nothing fits me. Nothing. So I make it all. And I make it for fun. And because I like a certain style or I find a certain pattern or I have some fabric that I think should be a whatever. And I do that. You do. And you've also got the colors that you like to wear as well. I always say I could hide in the shrubbery. Maybe a few flowers of orange in there for extras, <laughs> but I like a lot of murky colors, greens and browns and grays. And I don't wear as much blue, but I like blue. I love indigo, but I don't wear as much of it as one would think I ought to. But I don't like really pink. It's like my least favorite color. <laughs> I don't think there's any colors I really, really hate, but too much pink. Nah, not me. That was one of the colors you stayed fiercely away from when the whole Barbie <laughs> movie thing happened last year. Well, you know, when my Barbie, my Barbie was like the one in the beginning of the Barbie movie where she was wearing the bathing suit with the little blonde ponytail and the curly bangs. That was my Barbie and the striped bathing suit. No pink. Pink came later. Oh. Pink was not in the beginning of Barbie. Well, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so when the Barbie movie came, and we're going off on a tangent here, when the Barbie <laughs> movie came out, did that inspire you to do a particular look or not? No, no, not my thing at all, although I really enjoyed the movie, I have to say. Okay. But I had to not gross out at all the pink. My granddaughters liked pink when they were young. They went through the whole pink phase, and they grew out of them, both of them, pretty much. Going back to the first Barbie that you own, or the, your Barbie... My Barbie, yeah. Your Barbie, Louise's Barbie. Would you do that black and white stripe on a garment in the future? No, I'm not a huge stripe fan, I guess. I like plain colors mostly or batiks or mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Just I'm not a huge print fan. I like woven plaids as long as they're fairly subtle. And I like like stripes if they're fairly subtle, but I prefer plain colors, I guess. And here I am wearing patchwork right now, but um, <laughs> with lots of colors in it. But that was my way of using up all my scraps because I have lots of scraps. <laughs> but you've come up with ways to use them that are really quite stunning. Oh, thank you. This one was fun. This is my Scrappy Eddie. On your Instagram account, we can see how you went about making it and then how fabulous it looks at the end. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun to make. It really was. Do you use the scraps for quite a few things? I haven't in the past so much, but I am starting to view them as fodder for new things because I'm trying to not buy a whole lot of new fabric right now. I have this huge, gigantic stash and I've been going through it, but now I'm down to like, you know, much smaller pieces. Yep. So I'm trying to figure out ways to use the smaller pieces. It takes a lot longer too, which is good because my closets are very full. And unless I get rid of something soon, there's not going to be room for much more, which is the other reason why I'm sewing for my husband as well, because then saves my side of the closet from being too full. Okay. So if we can move on to your sewing for your husband. Yes. Is this something that he treasures or has wanted for a while? Oh yeah. He shows it off. She made this for me. I'm wearing a whole Louisa May outfit, um, that kind of thing. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Was this something that you thought you would do a while ago, but only got to it now? I started a few years ago, I guess, making him clothes. And he likes the pants I make him and the shirts I make him more than bought ones. And they fit him better. And he thinks it's fun to wear them. I knit his socks. He won't wear anything else but hand knit socks now. He's really spoiled. <laughs> he sounds it. <laughs> We've been married for 52 years. So, you know, it's been a while. <laughs> but there's more good men's patterns out now, I think, than there used to be. Yeah. The indie pattern designers, there are a few that have gone for men's patterns, which I like a lot. What are the favorite patterns that you use and the favorite patterns that you use for your husband? For me, it's all over the map these days. Okay. I've tried so many different designers 
like my pants are a lot of them are moon and broad because they fit me without very little messing with the designs i have to do so many pattern alterations normally some pattern companies fit me better right off the bat than others i have my basic patterns that i trace on to new things so i don't have to reinvent the wheel every time because yeah. my narrow forward slopey shoulders <laughs> means that just about every pattern needs to have that fixed, if nothing else. And then I also go through two, three, four, sometimes grading from the top of me, which is quite small, to the middle of me, which is why bot clothes don't fit me, because nothing is the right shape for me. Yeah. I have such a small torso, I like upper torso, and sleeves are way too long. I have to chop like two inches regularly off of all the patterns, long sleeves. So when you do your adjustments, here's a question for the technical people out there. Do you, when you're lengthening or shortening, do you take the length out of the middle of the pattern or at the end of the pattern? Sometimes I will take it off the bottom of the sleeve, but I'll, or, or sort of before the bottom and then slope it down to there so that the cuffs aren't too wide as well. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's more the middle of the pattern. Like a bodice pattern, sometimes I'll have to chop it across and take a little bit of the center out. And then also down below, sometimes I have to take another bit out. This depends on the pattern shape and where it's too big for me and where it's not fitting correctly. Sometimes I'd spend more time messing with the pattern after I've assembled like a PDF, which I really love doing. It's like a big puzzle. I spend more time making the pattern pieces fit me afterwards. I can't imagine just taking a pattern out of a package and having it work right off the bat. Not these days. So where you sometimes take Length off a bodice is across the top of the bust, so the high chest. Yeah. And then at the waist is the other area. Yeah. So I also have to go out there, but also for depth if it's too long. Yep. If it's like a dress or something that's too long for me. Although lots of times I like them longer, dresses or skirts or whatever. But pants too, I have to take out in, in the leg. Yep. That's a really common one. But it's more the shoulders, the armhole shape, the shoulder shape, a little more extra for the back of the neck, pulling the shoulders a little bit more forward because I have forward shoulders as well, which mostly everybody does these days. The older you get, the more punchy <laughs> you get, I guess. I've always had quite narrow forward shoulders anyway, even when I was very young. My body shape is what it is. That's right. But you have the skills to be able to adjust the patterns so that you can make clothes that actually fit you. Actually, a lot of my fitting skills have come in like maybe the past 15 or 20 years. Before that, I wasn't as good at it. I could do length adjustments. I had trouble trying to figure out why the big four patterns didn't fit me properly because they have so wide shoulders, deep armholes, yeah. all that stuff. It just was wrong. Even if I chose a size that should have been much too small for me, there was too much ease and it didn't fit properly ever until I finally learned how to fit it properly. It took so long to learn that stuff. But now there's so many more resources. I am so envious of people learning how to sew these days because you've got YouTube, you've got tutorials, you've got... The help of the pattern designers lots of times, too, if you're having trouble with something. That was never, ever out there when I was learning how to sew. When we learned how to sew, it was books. And I think there may have been a customer service number. At least I'm good at learning from books. I have a huge library of books. And not just for sewing, but for all the other fiber crafts that I do. I have looms. I have spinning wheels. I have... <laughs> Knitting, every fiber craft there is, I've done it and taught some of the classes in it too. You have? Mm hmm. I used to do that for my weaver skill. And also, I used to, at a shop, a local shop, I used to teach spinning. So you've given back to the community? I've tried. <laughs> they certainly didn't pay me a whole lot. So a lot of it was a labor of love, <laughs> but fun. And it was good to see people, you know, take what I learned and learn it themselves and then go fly with it and make fabulous things yeah 
That's good. <laughs> it makes you feel good. Totally. When did you discover the Sober 50 community on Instagram? I was following Judith before it was a twinkle in her little eye. Oh. Um, <laughs> and before she talked Sandy into helping her in the beginning. Right from the start. Yep. Are there any pattern designers that you've seen who feature older sellers on the grid since then? Pattern designers? Pattern companies. The ones that I see that show the most older people in them, though it's hard for me to tell who's older and who isn't these days since my kids are over 50. Tasuti has some of the older, like I think one of the ladies who actually owns Tasuti is she models for some of her patterns. Helen's Closet, for sure. My friend Kathy in real life has actually modeled for them. Wow. Merchant and Mills, I think, has quite a few. Although I find a lot of the ones that they have, even older women that are modeling are more of the Helen Mirren, gorgeous older person rather than the Judy Dench shape of people. And for me, it's less age related and more body shape related. And there's really not much out there that's body shape like mine. It's what you might call a diamond shaped body. Okay. You know, when they have you know, apples and pears and all that stuff, I'm none of those things. <laughs> but the closest I've ever seen is a diamond, which is rather rare, I think. Even in the community, I don't see too many people that have such narrow, narrow, wide, narrow. <laughs> I like to see people that are real. Not that those people aren't real, but you know what I mean? More common, because a lot of us older people are not the tall, slim, beautiful <laughs> <laughs> the slimness fades as your body changes with time and also with menopause and mm -hmm. have waists that thicken and that's not to do with eating or exercise but it's to do with how your body adjusts to age oh yeah I don't have a problem with the body shapes what I have a problem with is you have to learn how to make clothes for the body you have as opposed to the body you wish you had. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and learn what you like to wear that's comfortable, that makes you feel good while you're wearing it. You don't have to look like everybody else does to do that. Some styles will suit certain body shapes better than other body shapes. Like I cannot, for the life of me, wear a wrap dress or a wrap top. It does not work on my body. I do not know why. Or jumpsuits. I have problems with jumpsuits or boiler suits or any of those things. I look like a sausage somehow in a casing. It's not a good look, trust me. Having experimented, I guess, with clothing shapes over the years, and my body shape has actually not really changed a whole heck of a lot in the last 20 years. It's been pretty, pretty much where it is now. Fitting is huge, making things work for you. It's the fitting that's important so that you can make clothes for the body that you are right now, not the body that yes. you would like it to be. Your imagination isn't helpful. You have to get real numbers. Since I don't shop retail, I don't understand that having connecting yourself with a certain number. To me, that's not important because in so many different pattern lines, I use different sizes. And over a group of sizes, too. And I really have a problem with pattern designers who come out with two separate ranges of pattern sizing for a particular pattern and then sell them separately. I don't mind if they put them in one package, although sometimes that is a little awkward, too, because I'm what I call a middle. That I go right across the middle of the two ranges, usually. I need some elements from one side of the range and some elements from the other side. And if you sell them as two separate things, it makes it really difficult. <laughs> mm. I usually end up buying the smaller size range and then just grading up where I need it. I can do that, but not everybody can. That's right. So, Louisa, where can we find you online? I used to have a blog, but I have not touched it in a million years, and I couldn't even tell you what the URL is. Um, on Instagram, I'm damselfly.ca because there was no damselfly available, so I had to add the CA, which I thought meant for Canada, but apparently people think I'm from California sometimes, but, you know, it's Canada. You're Louisa at damselfly.ca on Instagram. And that's the only place you can find me. I read 200 books a year, minimum. I garden, 
I walk, I spend some time with family. They're all local, my kids and my grandkids. And when I'm on Instagram, it's mostly the so over 50s that I hang out with. Oh, good. And that gives you your online social connection. Yeah. So, Louisa, thank you for coming onto the podcast and talking to us about the sewing that you do, the various crafts that you get involved in, and with how you are in a, an integral part of the Sub 50 community. Oh, thank you, Maria. It was really fun to talk to you all the way over there in beautiful Australia in your sunshine. Oh, you've got some really great sunshine today, Louisa, in Canada. Oh, yeah, for a miracle. It was dumping rain yesterday, big time. We are so underwater over here right now. Oh, I hope you dry out soon. Trouble is the mountains are naked because all of the snow melted, so all of the skiers are very unhappy. Oh. And we're going to have a water shortage this summer because the snowpack is our water. It's going to be hard to water my garden. It will be unhappy. You might have to invest in desert plants. <laughs> in the rainforest. Yeah, that'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Louisa. Oh, thanks, Maria. Do take care. It's lovely to talk to you today. Bye-bye. Bye. This episode of So Organized Style Podcast for Sober 50 was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, with permission of Louisa, sound by bensound.com. Many thanks for the ongoing support of the podcast Patreon contributors. Their ongoing support each month enables me to develop this podcast for free. If you want to provide a guest post for Sober 50, make sure you direct message Sandy at the Sober 50 account on Instagram. You can subscribe to Soul Organized Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Sober 50 podcast archive. And if you can, please consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>